A quest for top-tier performance in robotics linear slides often comes down to small details. And how you string your slide is a huge one. Many common methods might look neat and organized, but they could be silently robbing your robot of precious speed. If you're serious about building robots that perform at their peak, you need to know which designs actually deliver. And this video is about uncovering that truth. I'm Brogan Pratt, and with over a decade teaching robotics and design, I've guided countless students through the nuances of building high-performance mechanisms. Today, I'm going to run you through an experiment. First, I'll explain two distinct ways of stringing a linear slide. One where the retraction string follows a complex path through multiple pulleys, and another with a much simpler, more direct route, sometimes called a floating retraction string. Then, we're putting them head-to-head -head in a direct speed test. We'll look at the hard data so you can see exactly what the performance impact is, allowing you to make informed decisions and to build faster, more efficient robots. Let's get started. So this is a double-strung uh, lift here. Effectively, what double-strung means is on each pulley, you've got both the extension and the retraction string wrapped up through the pulley itself. So coming off the spool, the extension goes through this pulley, this pulley, this pulley, this pulley, this pulley, until it eventually ties off here. And the retraction goes through this pulley, this pulley, this pulley, this pulley, this pulley, this pulley, this pulley but it eventually ties off to the traction string. So in comparison to a double strung system, you could run your system with the retraction string not going through the system. So your extension string still runs through the system and ties off, but your retraction string simply gets from the last point and it just goes straight down to the motor. Now the question is, does adding extra pulleys increase friction meaningfully enough that using a direct line from your track string meaningfully affects results. Let's go take a look. So looking at the mechanical setup here, I have three Misumi SAR 330s uh, connected together on a continuous rigging on uh, the extension and retraction string are running on the same uh, adapter. Next to this pulley, I've got a one-to-one -one gear ratio using some acetal gears so that when I go to replace the motor, I don't have to actually replace the pulley and restring my slides every single time. On the top bar here, I have a quick little bar here with a few different zap straps attached so that I can grab weights of different sizes. These are one kilogram weights and the small ones are uh, 500 grams so that I can move up in 500 gram increments and load that uh, somewhat balanced across my system as we move up and down. For the electronics, I have two different LEDs. One is a green LED, one is a yellow LED. The green LED looks at the extension section and the yellow LED looks at the retraction section. The green LED will turn on when retraction has started and it will turn off when retraction has met its max height. Same thing for the yellow, it will turn on when retraction has started, it will turn off when it's meet, met its base level. To know when my extensions have reached the bottom, I'm using the encoder that's attached to the motor here and then everything is controlled off of a button toggle switch. Lastly, to keep track of our cycle times, I've got a tracker here that tells us what our extension time was, where our traction was, and then as well as what of our cycle time was. I'm just using time monotonic to do that as we're running through our motor encoders. So if I were to run this in a full cycle, I would tap button. Green LED turns on, turns off, and it's up the top, brings it back down, turns on bottom. There is a 300 millisecond pause at the top, and that is a counter for in the cycle. Last things to confirm, I'm using a fully charged battery here on a Roboclaw 12 volt 30 amp. Uh, microcontroller, the battery I'm using is the same one that is Nickel and FTC. So you can be sure that this data is always going to be the same and it should be pretty applicable for you based off of your tests. So let's go get started. Okay, so I've got the 435 motor hooked up on here now. I uh, got a reprogram for the new encoder positions and let's get a look at the baseline. I've also taken and swapping out a brand new battery so that we're nice and charged at 13.2 volts. So let's take a look at what the baseline is. So looks like we're sitting about 2.04 seconds as a baseline. Let's go ahead and add out half a kilogram, see what that gets us. Pretty good, added about a tenth of a second. Looks like we're averaging about 2.12, 2.13. Let's swap that out for a kilo.
And we're a mighty consistent 2.25. Let's go for a kilo and a half. Well, pretty big slowdown on that one. 2.38 is our average. Let's go up to two kilograms. You could really hear the motor starting to work on that one. Okay, we're sitting about 2.57 on average. Let's go up to two and a half kilograms. You're looking at about 2.88, 2.89 for an average. We'll see if it can even lift three kilograms realistically. Let's give this a test. Ooh. Looks like you're probably going to max out about three kilograms on a 435 RPM motor. Uh, you're sitting at about 3.28. I don't know if I want to run that too many times uh, just because of the, just how slow that got. So let's keep moving up. So now let's take a look at the single strung system where the retraction drink does not loop through all the different pulleys. Uh, and let's see if that makes any difference across all of our baselines here. Okay, looks like we're averaging about 207, 208 on a fresh battery. Let's add up 500 grams, see if that makes a difference. You really have to make sure that you get your string well aligned. Mine's clearly not perfectly well aligned and that's able to get hung up on one of these systems here. So let's do that baseline again. There we go. Okay. So you're looking at 213 both times across. Let's move up to a kilogram. Okay, about 214, 216, so let's say 215 in between. Let's move up to a kilo and a half. Okay, we're looking at about 222. Let's move on up to uh, two kilos. Looking at about 229. Let's move our way up to two and a half kilograms here. Looking at about 2.4 and let's move up to our full three kilograms is where about we maxed out uh, on the double string. And we're set about 271. So let's change this over for a single strung system on an 1150 motor and see if that makes any uh, difference. This is the 1150 RPM motor. Uh, I've swapped out a new battery. I've got our encoder reprogrammed uh, to our new start and stop points. So let's get a baseline started here. Wicked quick at 1150, uh, we're looking at 0.86 second cycle time. So under a second, that's pretty impressive. Let's see what we can do when we add on 500 grams. Whoa, throws our weight to the ground. <laughs> yep, throws it to the ground again. Let's uh, strap that on so we don't lose that. There we go. Let's try it one more time. Oh, that is quick. So we're looking at average cycle time about 1.14 seconds. Let's see how it does with a kilogram. Uh, I'm going to knock that off. 
Throw on a kilogram. I think it's going to struggle here with a kilo, but let's see. Ooh, quick at the bottom. Oh, yeah, that's real quick. Real quick. In fact, we actually shattered off our zip tie there so much. Uh, so we're looking at about uh, 0.3 seconds to come down because that is looking a little bit off, but that's because it takes about a quarter second pause at the top. And because it takes that pause at the top, this is already starting to fall down when the motor is not powered at that point. Um, so realistically, if you're not actually providing power to this motor, it's always going to be dropping it down. This is now the single strung section on the 1150 motor. Uh, so let's go ahead and get a baseline. Looks like our baseline is about 0 0.85, 0 0.86. This is with a fresh battery, by the way. Let's go ahead and put up 500 grams. As you learned last time, this thing likes to fly off. So we're going to go ahead and uh, tie this down so that she can't go flying off. All right, so let's take a look at 500 grams. Let's let it balance out. Okay, it looks like we're averaging about 0 0.95, 0 0.96. Let's move up to a kilogram. Okay, let's take a look at a kilo. Boy. Okay, looks like we're only going to average about one test on that one because we have shattered our mount. Make sure you're using a PETG on these. This is just a PLA one, and it's more likely to shatter. Uh, as well, you probably shouldn't have a whole kilogram coming down to forcing on the bottom of that. But in any case, for our test, this is enough data that we need. Let's go to the computer and let's take a look at some of these charts. Uh, on the left-hand side, we've got our double strong, and on the right-hand side, we've got our floating retraction string. So if we look at our data here, uh, yellow is our absolute cycle times for our 435 motors. And it looks like if we keep the system not loaded, so if we have you know, below 500 grams, there's really effective no difference between these two systems. But as we start to add more load to our double strong system, you'll notice that the added weight of having to move that string through that extension point starts to pretty dramatically increase our extension times. Uh, down on the double string, our extension time is significantly more when we are uh, double strung. And it's about equivalent when it's floating strung. However, the retraction is significantly faster when you're on a double strung system versus a floating strung system. So the same thing is true when we get to about that 200 grams. Overall, it's about the same. But we can see over here in that flurry retraction, as we start to get more and more torque applied to that system, because we're starting to add more and more load, it really does start to increase those extension times. Same thing on that double strung system. But the double strung system takes significantly longer. Like when we start getting to this 1,000 grams or kilogram point, still pretty negligible difference, talking about 0.1 seconds. But if you start to get into that 3,000 grams, we're starting to talk about 3 seconds versus 2.71 seconds. Another thing that you can't see in this data, but is likely also happening is on this double strung system, you may also find that it is pulling out it's using a little bit more current to be able to make itself pull itself all the way up because it's got a lot more friction in the system that it has to pull against. So that may also be something to consider inside of this system. Now taking a look at the 1150 motor, we see a very similar thing. When the system is not loaded, there's effectively no difference. There's a very negligible difference around 500 grams. And then we start getting up to the gram where you start getting closer to your torque limits of your motor, it starts to really make a big difference. So key takeaway of this system for your double strong versus your floating retraction. Hey, future coach Brad here, just checking in. I ran another test uh, in a later point. Um, I just wanted to talk about the quality of bearings that you use really quick. I've got a full video coming on that later in the future, um, but this does dramatically change my recommendations that I made in the last two minutes of this video. Uh, so this LQ is a low quality bearing versus this HQ is a high quality bearing. Um, so on the high, on the dual strung system, 
with a low quality string, we're running about 1.8 seconds for a cycle. Whereas with a high quality bearing, we're running at about 0.92 seconds a cycle. So why does this actually matter? Well, let's take a look at these comparisons. So I have the dual strung versus single strung here on both the 435 and the 1150 section. So on the 1150 RPM motor, the single strung is in yellow and the dual strung is in red. Same thing on the 435 motor. Now, when you look at that single strung versus that dual strung system, there's effectively no difference between the two. We're talking about 0 0.05 milliseconds difference uh, between these two. 0 0.06 on no load, 0 0.05 on loaded, and effectively no difference um, on 1,000 grams. Uh, this one's probably up to a standard error. And even honestly, the difference between these two is pretty well attributed to a standard uh, deviation of error when it comes to those testing. Because I only ran those tests about th over three cycles, which is not, yeah, it's a good data point, but it's not enough to really get a ton of data off of. Whereas we look with the 435 motor, they're effectively the same. We're talking about 0 0.06, 0 0.05 seconds between the two. And when we come over load, they get even closer. Uh, so in my opinion, it's going to still, based on my other recommendations, when you look at those high quality bearings versus the low quality bearings, when you look at a floating retraction or a single strong system versus that dual strong system that I recommend, unless you have a real need for that single strong system coming down another point, having that extra constraints of a dual strong system really does outperform that single strong system. So keep an eye out in the future about uh, looking for that experiment that I run on high quality versus low quality bearings. Uh, and uh, best of luck in creating your next robotics project.